Also, Donimus, if you want to be a part of our family on here, we are the only, um, hey sis, God bless you. We are the only full fledged Christian family on the app. Like we, we don't reject non-Christian people, but we receive them in hopes to, in hopes to help them change their lives. But our, our family is well known as the, um, Christian family on the app. So if you want to join, just click my name or anybody that has, you see how, if you look at my name, it has a, a, a rally. If you click my profile, it has a rally flag, my name in the middle, and then a, that little speaker box person. That's our emblem. That stands for, uh, the race. We, you know, we're, we're racing, running this race and finish this race. And we're going to tell it on, go pee. The bathroom that way. Why are you in here? Go. Aramis, go tell your mommy you got to go pee. Go. Go tell your... Mm. Anyways, so that speaker box signifies going and telling it on a mountain. Basically, an evangelical service. Um, but the name of our family is called LOE People. League of Extraordinary People. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, just click my name up there. And then when you click... um. You I forgot how to do it. I ain't did it in so long. You click my name and then it'll say join. You'll see the um, LOE banner in there. When you click my name, it'll show you like the, the uh, clan. It's like a purple banner that says L.O.E. People. You click that and then you request to join. And honesty always, if she sees it, she can let you in. If, if, uh, if she doesn't, I'll get to it later on when I get off here. But yeah, man, it's, you know, everything, everybody in our family believe in Jesus Christ. Everybody in our family uh, encourage each other. We all pray for each other. We put each other's name on prayer lists. And, you know, we just, we just try to keep, okay, it's under review. Cool. No, he, you know, so, so I like, told him, I said, I'll help you um, figure things out. Cause yeah, we all know that this app is not a Christian app in no form or fashion. We brought the gospel to the app. And God has been moving in our favor. Welcome, Dan welcome, Dunamis, to the family. You should be a part now. Now, Dunamis, if you go into your, um, your what is it? What is that called? Emojis and all that. You can go find that that rally flag and put that in the front of your name, and then put the speaker box thing person on the end, and you'll you'll look like us. If you look at everybody in our in our family's name, we have the flag and the speaker box with our name in between it. And if you want to throw that purple cross in there too, please feel fine to do it. Feel free to do it. It's kind of like RW, how we have RWs in the front of our name on Xbox. It's sort of the same thing, but we're this, we, we do ministry on here. And be very careful too, because if you're on the app and you troll and you're strolling around and people see you got that tag on you, they might kick you out their room, especially if they don't believe in Jesus or they don't care about ministry. Um, it's not a bad thing. We kind of look at it as cool. At first, it used to bother us. People, man, I can't go nowhere. They're kicking me out of everywhere I go. And it's because these people don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it comes with the territory. It makes the Bible prophecies come to pass in our life anyways, because Jesus told us we was going to be persecuted for his namesake. So every time I get kicked out of somebody's room or get talked about or get or people come for me, I actually get excited and, and, and happy <laughs> because it's letting me know I'm doing something right. But anyways, let me get back into this this um, Anthony Evans song. I just want to cut it short to say what's up to Dunamis. Welcome to the family. That's a RW member from my Xbox crew has joined the Bego family over here. So dope. All right. But y'all, let's get back into this. This is Anthony Evans. Halfway through the song. He loves us. Let's go. I mean, how he loves. Let's go. Freddie Mac is in the building. God bless y'all. Um, what was I going to say? Mom, follow Dunamis. That's one of my Xbox buddies right there. Dunamis, this is my spiritual mom. Maria, you see me? Or, well, it don't say Maria, you see me right there. It just say Maria. But that is like our church mother. Um, yes. Great woman. Honestly, follow her as well. Great woman. Franny Mac, follow her as well. Um, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get Dun Dunamis to follow all of the family because he, you know how when you first get on Beagle, they just force you to follow all of this mess, 
on the app. Um, and then next thing you know, your phone is just bigger, 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 bigger. And then they sending you messages looking for a sugar daddy, looking for a sugar mama. And uh, this your wife and this your husband. They do all this craziness on the app. So we just trying to gut that out so Dunamis won't be turned off by the app. So y'all all please, LOE family, follow Dunamis. Dunamis, please follow these great, great people. Um, and if you, you know, if you're going through any type of thing, you need somebody to talk to and confidence, uh, you can talk to them. You can talk to mom. Um, mom and honesty are our co-founders. They're kind of like the co-leaders of RW, but the co-founders of LOE, they, uh, help run the family. Well, the entire family helps run the family, but they deal with a lot of, you know, personal matters and, you know, some more serious stuff that we may talk about behind the scenes. So if you got any thing you need prayer for or you need to just talk to somebody please feel free to reach out to any one of us man you know we could talk all day what's going on papa um but yeah so please follow these good people here um you know they're gonna lead you to the cross lead you to jesus and that's all we're about on this app we don't care about nothing else on the app uh you know as far as anything outside of the kingdom's business um i wanted to just share a real quick uh story about faith um you know and and and, a, and just a little bit about how it works before i get back into the playlist um so we was at church today and our, the message was about um faith factor uh our uh pastor preached about the faith factor and he preached it out of he preached out of hebrews 11 and 1 y'all know that scripture faith is the Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Um, but you know, he just, just was ta just talking about a bunch of faith stuff. But he, before he finished, he said, throughout your day, say it is well, you know, whatever. When you get home, if the, if the, if the, if the chemistry in your house is off, just say it is well. If, problems at your job say it as well somebody getting on your nerves say it as well you know just speaking positive affirmations and things like that over yourself and having faith that it is well so earlier my dog got out is he haven't got out in about a week but we happened to, i finally got the whole house up to go to church with me today it took three weeks don't tell nobody i said nothing it took three weeks, but I got the whole household up to go to church. And um, as we were at church, the dog broke out, y'all. His name Jonah. So y'all know the story behind Jonah. He ran from God, didn't want to listen, and God had to trap him in the belly of the fish. But anyway, so Jonah gets out. Um, I, once somebody in the neighborhood calls me and tells me that the dog is out. So um, me and my, you know, we went to go get some food. So it took a little while to get back to the person in the neighborhood when i get to the person that he said i went in the house and when i came back out the dog was gone so now i'm driving all around this neighborhood looking for my dog couldn't find him anyways get back home somebody calls me hey we got your dog i go get the dog and when i go get the dog it's on a street that you can't park uh on the curb so i turn the hazard lights on and um get the dog throw him in the car take him home get out the car go to sleep for about four hours so the hazard lights are on Boom, boom, boom. So my wife goes out to get something out the car. And she's like, babe, why is the lights flashing? I'm like, oh, snap, I left the hazard lights on. So she goes to start the car. Battery dead. Car doesn't start. So now she's losing it. Oh, my God, if it ain't one thing, it's another, you know, you know. Um, and mind you, Pastor said, if anything goes wrong, you know, if anything troubles you, whatever, just say it is well. So when she started, you know, getting ready to trip, um, I just, you know, I had to tell, I said, babe, calm down. And then to myself, I said, it is well. And I said, oh, this is an opportunity to test my faith, to test my faith. Right. So I'm like, this is this is what I do. I say, I'm about to go out here and lay hands on this car. Mind you, the battery dead. It, car been flicking for four hours. Look, this ain't a miracle story. So don't get all excited. Car battery them thing flicking for four hours. The uh, um, hazard lights. So I'm like, you know what? I'm about to go out here and lay hands on this car and say it is well and it's going to cut on. So I go out there, <clears throat> you know, I'm with the theatrics and everything. Lay hands on the car, nothing. I'm like, Jesus, 
Lay hands on the car in the name of Jesus. Start right now. Nothing. I said, I got faith that this car is going to start. I got faith. I'm not sitting here in a doubt in my mind that this car is not going to start. I, I had a Bible in the passenger seat. So I lay my hand on the Bible and try to start the car. Nothing. So I'm like, Lord, what is this? I'm, I got faith that this car is going to start. And God, I just hear God say, call some people. So now I'm calling my friends. I call one of my good buddies that I play Xbox with that stay up the way from me. So I'm like, hey, man, you think I can get a jump? <sighs> they wasn't trying. They wasn't going for it. Long story short. So I'm like, all right. So I call my landlord, see if he out and about. Hey, man, you in, you in traffic, man? You think you can give me a jump? Oh, I got to go take my family uh somewhere because they're going on vacation so i'm like all right it's cool call my cousin hey man you think you can come give me a jump oh man we on our way to this reggae uh fest i mean this reggae concert lord because mind you i already knew something about this mean something when my when i see my wife troubled about it and i and it's, once i see my wife troubled about it i'm like okay well pastor said if anything troubles you today, say it as well. So mind you, I'm in, I'm in good spirits the whole time. I'm not tripping. I'm not worried about it. But my wife is like, oh my God, I got to go to work in the morning. And you know, the whole nine. So I'm like, Lord, where is it at? Now I'm, you see what I'm, I'm, I'm constantly at God about this situation. It's just a simple dead battery situation. But still, I tried to go out there and do some miracle stuff and lay hands on cars and work in the name of Jesus. And God said, the faith is that the car will start before your wife has to go to work, not going right outside and touching the car. So I didn't see it that way at first. I'm just like, I got, I know I got faith in this car working if I go out here and lay hands on it. And God said, God had to slow me down and show me. He said, the faith is not in you going right outside and laying hands on the car and getting it to start. The faith is knowing that the car is going to start before your wife goes to work tomorrow. So I said, so I, I done called everybody. I'm talking to God now. My, I'm just, just regular conversation. This is how we get down. This is how we talk. So I'm like, well, Lord, where, how is this car going to start before she go to work tomorrow? All my friends, there's nobody that I can call that's going to come and give me a jump to start this car. So God said, go ask your next door neighbor. I don't even know these people like that. So I go knock on the door. Hey man, you you think um you can give me a jump? He like, uh, where you at? I'm like, man, I'm right next door to you. He all right. So he come with the jumper cables, boom, start the car, car start. What am I saying? The faith the, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So, you know, I was trying to go out there and just have faith that I'm gonna touch this car. The battery is dead. It needs a jump, regardless in or, to start. But I'm trying to go out there and make a miracle happen and do all this stuff. And God had to hit me. He said, faith without works is dead. If you didn't go and do something to activate the faith, it wouldn't have, you wouldn't have got the car back started before tomorrow. So I was like, it made sense to me. And, you know, and I wanted to just share this with somebody. You know, sometimes we have faith, but we don't want to do our part to activate the faith. We just want God to just open up the Red Sea for us, but we don't want to start walking towards the Red Sea. We just want things to just unfold for us because we say we have faith. And the Bible says faith without works, meaning I had to do something. I had to go because I could have sat in the house. I heard God tell me the car is going to start before your wife has to go to work tomorrow. Now, it was up to me to figure out how I was going to start. I done went out there, laid hands all on the car. I did all kind of, <laughs> I did all kind of stuff. I'm in there touching Bibles and speaking in tongues and all of this type of stuff. And, and God said, no, you got to go work for it. Go knock on your next door neighbor. Now, mind you, just because my neighbor couldn't have been home. My other neighbor on the other side of me, they was gone. And my neighbor could have said, no, it's so many things. That could have made that not happen, but I had faith in what God told me to do. He said, it's going to start before tomorrow. So it gave me enough room to put some work in to activate the faith. Um, so, you know, my neighbor came, gave me the jump. When I jumped the car, I, I drive to the store and go uh, give me a, give me something to drink and come back. 
and I just turned the car off and come in the house. And my wife is like, did you start the car? Does the car charge? I'm like, I mean, did you, she's like, did you uh, get a jump? I'm like, yeah. She's like, did you start the car to make sure it starts back up? I'm like, I was driving the car. It's going to automatically charge. And she was like, did you start the car to make sure it char uh, to make sure it starts back up? Now, this was instant faith. I told myself on, on the way back to the car. Oh, the car start. When I get to this car and put these keys in the ignition, by faith, this car is definitely going to start. And sure enough, I went in there, doo -doo -doo, car start. What am I saying? Sometimes we have to be patient and we have to really wait and see where it is. You know, sometimes we say we have faith in something, but we're not doing nothing to activate the faith. We're not putting ourselves in a position to let God show us how faith works. And, you know, God gave it to me. He said, the, this is all he needed to tell me. The car will start before your wife gets to work tomorrow. It was my job to figure out how this is going to happen. That's the works part that we have to, you know, if God's, if you hear God say something to you, no matter how crazy it look or how impossible or how unavailable people may be, if you work towards what God has told you, the faith is going to kick in. And sure enough, my neighbor, he was kind. And, you know, he said, man, man, no problem. Love to help me. He said, man, I just want to make sure I got some good neighbors, man. And I was like, well, you definitely got a good neighbor over over here. Um, but, you know, that was just my little faith story. I could have I could have lost faith if I would have went out there on some religious miracle. Lord, you said you uh, do a miracle. I'm touching the car and touching Bibles and doing all of this um, traditional miracle stuff, trying to get the car to start without a jump. And God said, that's not how it's going to work. This is this is what I'm going to give you. Your car will start before your wife has to go to work tomorrow. You figure it out. That's the works part. So if you, I forgot what scripture, I believe that's in James, um, where the Bible says faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You know, we want God to move on our behalf, but we're not doing nothing to move God, you know? So I just wanted to share that little faith story. Now the car running, working fine. Um, and God did, you know, he, he always comes through on his promise. If God, and that's another thing too, if God has promised you something, no matter how many years ago it was, no matter how long ago it was, if you felt God telling you to do something, thank you, Kiki. If you felt God telling you to do something or you felt God telling you what you're going to be or what, what um, is to come, if it's been years and, and it hasn't came to pass, that does not mean it's not going to come to pass. Whatever God tells you he's going to do, whatever God promises you, he is going to fulfill that promise. Sometimes we just have to work towards the faith. You know what I'm saying? So if, if God says, for instance, Kiki, if God says you're going to write an album, you're going to do music. If you're not, if you're not taking pens and paper out and, 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 and you know, moving towards what God has promised you, then you're not going to ever do the music. You know, when God tells us something, that doesn't mean it's just going to unfold for itself. For instance, if God, like I said, you're going to be, you're going to write an album, Kiki. If there's no, if you, if it's not just going to pop up on paper, right? So your part is to work. Your part is to, let me start working on this album, Lord. You, you Now you're putting yourself in a posture and you're putting yourself in a position for God to move. Lord, I'm sitting here with my pen and my paper. I need you to give me the lyrics to write these worship songs unto you. And he does the rest. So, you know, I just that was my faith without works uh, story I just wanted to tell on today. And God really came through for me. You know, my wife ain't in there stressed out about how she gonna get to work. We ain't gotta, we ain't gotta hope somebody come through. All of my buddies, they was just like, oh, I can't help you, sir. Um, you know, a couple of them right up the street. You know, I said, man, these my, these my, when I was in the world, these was my alcohol and marijuana buddies. I, I almost got mad. I told myself when I got off the phone, I said, now, if I was still smoking weed and drinking and I said I had a bottle and some some of the finest kush, they would have been at my door ready to smoke and drink. But my my battery needs to be charged. And it's like, oh, man, I'm sorry. And they right up the street. So thanks be to God that he touched the heart of my neighbor to, um, you know, want to come help me. But the whole purpose of that, thank you, Papa. The whole purpose of that was for God to show me that without works, faith is dead. If you're not moving towards the faith, it's not going to come to pass. You, you can't just say stuff and just, 
You know, you're just sitting there like, if the Lord requires us to do something too, faith, you know, I wrote something down. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? This was good too. Watch this. So write this down, Kiki. Watch this. My pastor said it in church. I was like, ooh, that's a bar. I wrote it down too. I said, I'm going to share that. Um, watch this. Where is it at? Where are we at? Watch this. You ready, Kiki? You ready? Faith is believing in something when logic or common sense says not to. That hit me when my pastor said it. I was like, ooh, I wrote that down. It makes so much sense. I'm going to say it again. Faith is believing in something when logic or common sense says not to. Did it, 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 did it resonate yet? Did I say that word right? Did it resonate yet? I'm going to read it one more time. Faith is believing in something when logic or common sense says not to. Logic and common sense is, you know, we can all agree that we can depend on logic and common sense, right? And I hope I'm making sense. We can all agree that we can depend on logic and common sense. When that rises up against faith, that when that rises up against something you believe, that's what that that can hinder your faith. We, you know, we we do stuff like we'll say, I, I need a Lord. I need a good scenario. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of a good scenario for this, but basically something that's almost impossible. But logic is like, I wouldn't do that if I was you. That doesn't make sense to do that. But your faith presses past that. I got faith that it will. You know, like, for instance, getting a great job that you need to go to college for and you didn't go to college, but you still get the good job. You still get that great job because of your faith. You believe that you can. I'm going to walk in here by faith and not by sight. I'm going to walk in this job by faith, fill out this application, talk to these people, and I'm going to get this job even though the requirements say I have to go to college, say I have to have this much years experience, say I have to you know know these different type of things. That's logic and common sense right there saying that, well, you know, you ain't going to get the job because you didn't go to college. That's logic and common sense. You ain't going to get that job because of... You don't have this many years experience. That's logic and common sense. You ain't going to get the job because you don't know this, that, and the third to work the job. That's logic and common sense. Faith is saying, even though I don't have the credentials, even though I didn't go to college, even though I don't have this many years of experience, I'm going to get this job. And you got to feel it and know in your heart that you're going to get the job because God does something with us. That's what this is what's interesting about the activation of our faith. God does something to where we kind of know already that we're going to get it, even though we don't have it. But you just know deep down inside like this is mine. And then you move on that. Hebrews 1, Hebrews 11 and 1 says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, it's, it's a thought like, man, that would be nice. To have that. And then you move on that thought. And then next thing you know, you have it. That's how the faith works. So, you know, I know it was just a simple battery uh, charge uh, story. But God told me before tomorrow, the car will start. But I had to do the work. You know, I, I didn't just go off of just what God said as far as word. Him said, he could, I could have laid in the bed and said, okay. Well, you said the car going to start tomorrow and then my wife get up for work and don't make it to work because the car didn't start because I didn't do the work part. That's why the Bible says faith without works is dead. So, you know, I just wanted to share that story. I wasn't trying to preach it or anything. It was just very interesting how God showed me that. And and and, and it was like from that moment, I started to give in the in, in the area of faith. I started to give it some more rope. Sometimes when when we when we move in faith. We don't give it enough space to, to get done. We just, well, the Lord said this, and then we just, we don't, we don't think about the works part. We just want God to just give us everything with nothing that, with, with, uh, with us not doing anything to, to, to activate the faith. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like this big gap. And you think you can't jump across it, but God tells you if you run fast enough and jump, you will get to the other side, but you don't move. So now you say God lied to you. 
<laughs> you didn't even run. You got scared. You looked at how big the gap was and didn't run and jump across because you got scared. But God told you if you run and jump across the gap, you're going to make it to the other side. Do you have faith that he that you're going to make it to the other side? Well, if you have faith to make it to the other side, the works part is the run. You got to do your part. God's not going to just pick you up and float you over it. He wants you to run and jump across. When you get to the other side, now you can say, thank you, Lord, for I have faith that I was going to get to the other side of this, this gap. And guess what? We got to the other side of the gap. Amen. So I just wanted to share that little faith story. Um, so yeah, the car is working. The battery is charged. And my, like God told me, your wife will make it to work tomorrow. <laughs> the car will start. And she will make it to work tomorrow. Amen. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, mom. Okay. I just wanted to share that uh, quick story here. Now let's get back into this. We got Our God by Chris Tomlin. Our God by Chris Tomlin. Let's go. Hey. Good, man. Hi. God bless you, man. Yeah. God bless you. God bless the Philippines. Pinai, Pinai. You, 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 my barcada. Yeah, barcada. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe you wanted to share something. We praying for the Philippines. We praying for your family. God bless you. Many blessings to your household. Man, I like that pillow. Come on, Louie. Come on, Louie pillow. But God bless you, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, God. <laughs> God bless you. The, the beautiful thing about this song, he said, don't, he said, don't move. Let God fight. You know, sometimes we try to fight a spiritual battle with a physical fight. You know, the Bible even tells us in um, in Ephesians that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The Bible tells us we don't fight against actual flesh. We fight against things that are in the spiritual realm. And who is in the spiritual realm? Who runs the spiritual realm? God does. God is a spirit. So we have to let him fight the battle. We already got the victory. That's that's what, the beautiful thing about what he said is the old song we used to sing in the church. And it was, don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Because you know in the end that you're going to win. The devil is, the devil can't win. The only way he wins is if he attacks your mind and you surrender to him. We don't surrender. The harder the devil fights you, the more you give it to God. And the more you let the Lord un let the Lord know that you understand, I can't win this battle without you. When you say that, you give you give all the power back to God. And God takes you, puts you in a place where you're safe, which we call a strong tower, which we call a standard, which we call, you know, a wall that God will defend us from the enemy from. And then God does the rest. He fights the battle. He moves the things out the way. He, he, he protects you from the attacks of the enemy. The devil can't kill you. A lot of people don't understand that the devil does not have the power to kill you. He can only lead you to do it to yourself or he can only set you up for it to happen. But he can't physically pop up and say, ah, he, he can't kill you. He can only deceive you. He can only trick you into making decisions that can ruin your life. I talked about this yesterday um, in Matthew chapter four. The devil tried to convince and tried to use scripture against Jesus to get him to jump off of a mountain and commit suicide. Most people that uh, are suicidal, they don't even realize they're having a full fledged conversation with the devil trying to talk them into ending their own life. These are two unforgiven sins, blaspheme in the Holy Spirit and suicide. If you kill yourself, you can't ask for forgiveness. Forgiven. For, how you say it? Forgiveness. <laughs> you kill yourself, you can't ask for forgiveness. You can't say, Lord, forgive me, and then do something wrong. You know, if that was the case, we'd all be getting away with stuff. But the enemy, he tries. He tries to get in your mind. The, the battle and the war starts in your mind. So praise be to God that we have an automatic victory god is undefeated y'all tell me somewhere where god lost a battle any story in life tell me where god has lost a battle he hasn't and 
The God we believe in has withstood the test of time. All these other deities got grave sites. Buddha got a grave site. Muhammad got a grave site. Jesus don't got no grave site. They can't take you nowhere where Jesus is buried at because he got up with all power in his hands, conquered death, hell, and the grave. And he did it for us. I don't know if this uh, scripture... Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I was looking for a scripture to read pertaining to that song. Um, so, you know, the Lord gave me 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. And in 15 and 57, it says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and say through our Lord, Jesus Christ. We can't lose. We can't lose. We undefeated when it comes to Christ. He did it for us already. You know, um, you know, the Bible, I believe it's Ephesians 6 and 16, if I'm not mistaken. I got the Bible right in my hand, but it talks about the shield of faith. Um, the shield of faith, when you hold up your shield of faith, is to block off the fiery darts of the devil. So what your shield of faith does is defend you from the attacks of the enemy. Every time the, every time you lift up your faith and the devil attacks, that dart hits that, uh, hits that shield and it bounces back at the enemy and it sends him back to his home. And if I say where his home was, you'd think I was cussing if I said devil go to hell. <laughs> so every time you lift up your shield and defend yourself through Jesus, which is your faith, which you have your faith in, the devil, every dart he throws at you, these fiery darts are darts of doubt, darts of depression, darts of, you know, things that attack you and make you feel like you are losing. God is undefeated. The devil can't win. All he can do is try to look like he's winning. He can manipulate the situation to make it look like he's winning. But we have to remember, hold on, hold on. I'm already victorious. I already won. I can't lose. I'm on, I'm on the winning team. God is undefeated. Can't nobody beat God. And the more crazy the situation seems, the more dire the situation seems, the more um, crucial the situation seems, that's the more you fall back into the arms of God. And you tell him, look, God, I can't do this, but you can. <laughs> God bless you, sis. God bless you. You fall back in the arms of God. And you say, Lord, and this is not a doubt thing. You're not doubting. You're telling God, I can't fight this battle. I need you to do it. <laughs> and guess what? He does it. God got our back. Amen. So I just, you know, that song just, you know, it sparked something in me to find a scripture that talks about the victory. The devil knows he can't win. He's a deceiver. To be a deceiver, that means you have to trick people into making them think that something that is not true is actually true. Deceiver. And once you know your enemy and know how he get down, when he starts attacking, you laugh more instead of panicking. See, the devil wants us to panic. When the enemy starts attacking us, we oh, 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 oh. we doing all of that. I had some good days and some heels to climb. We start singing these I won't complain songs. We got to start living like we won't complain. When the devil start rearing his ugly head up, we got to laugh at him. I always say this. It reminds me of the, the whiz. Um, you know, when they got to the the wizard, the Wizard of Oz, or whatever, when they got to him, and they pulled, he was he was this big old gigantic voice, this scary sounding voice, and this big old figure behind the curtain. But when they moved the curtain back, he was a little bitty old person on this machine trying to make himself look bigger than he really was. The enemy is a small. He's he, he got to look at somebody or write in the comments. The enemy is light work. The enemy is light work. We got to stop letting the devil feel like he doing something to us. Soon as we see it, we all, oh, Lord, yeah. we start complaining and worrying instead of laughing and putting them in this place. Like, up oh, here he go. God, you got to remember when the enemy starts attacking you, God has something prepared for you. When the enemy is attacking you, God has something in store for you. The devil won't bother you if he already got you. The devil don't bother you if you ain't got no blessings coming. The devil don't bother you if God ain't moving in your life. So when the enemy is bothering you, it's because God is doing something in your life and the devil is trying to distract you. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, I just want to share that with y'all. You already won.
Amen. You already won. The victory is already yours. You got to stop letting the enemy think he's beating us because he ain't beating us. He ain't even doing nothing to us. We're doing it to ourselves because we get in our own mind. We start worrying. We start inflating the attacks. It don't even be what we what we think it is. We just amplify it. And that's helping the devil destroy you. You got to fall in ar the arms of God. Like, Lord, tell God he is your Lord and Savior. He is your father. He's there for you. So you tell God, Lord, this is hard. I need you. And then relax. Let the Lord fight your battle. The Bible says, I mean, is that the Bible? I know it's a song. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, you already won. Amen. So let's do this. Let's, let's, let's finish getting into this. We got about 30 more minutes, 20 more minutes or something. And I'll be out y'all way. Amen. This is, I give myself away. That Jesus looked at us. But this is what's even more important. You noticing that he's seen you. You know, Jesus is, God is looking at all of us, but everybody's not looking back. Every, no, you know, everybody's not noticing that God is looking at them. Thank God for us noticing that God was looking at us because he said something that was powerful. He said, my life was changed with just one look. That means when he noticed that Jesus was looking at him, he started making changes in his life. You know, um, it's kind of like when you're at work and you're not doing your job like you're supposed to and your boss look over at you and you start cleaning up and working all, you know, working all fast and stuff, trying to impress your your boss. Well, when Jesus looked at us, hey, hey, Chia, God bless you, sis. When Jesus looked at us, we started getting it together. We started cleaning up for real. We start because we wanted to impress him. So thank God for looking at us. Thank God for seeing us. You know, the Bible talks about um, in Romans chapter one, people being given over to a reprobate mind. I thank God that he didn't give us over to nothing that would draw, that would pull us away from him. He actually drawn us closer to him by looking at us. You know, if you read your Bible, you would notice a lot of things that were going on with people. God was giving them over to it. There's, there's scriptures where it says God allowed a spirit of something to come over a person. So I just thank God for seeing me. And once he looked at me, I started making changes to please him. You know, it's not, you know, and I said this the other day and it was crazy because my pastor said this today at church too. Um, sometimes we get, we get so caught up in wanting God to do things for us. We get so caught up in wanting God to please us. We get so caught up in wanting God to answer our prayers and open doors for us and bless us with all these different things. But what are we doing to please God? You know, we should, we should posture ourselves and posture our hearts in a way that we're like, Lord, what can I do to make you happy today? I know you got me. You told me you will never leave me nor forsake me. You told me you'll supply all of my needs. You told me I'm a um, the royal priesthood. You told me all these great things about myself. But God, what can I do to please you? You know, so when, when he looked at us, you know, our lives was changed. Our families was healed. Bodies restored with just one look. I love that song. That song is a great song because it, it identifies with God looking at us. And when he looked at us, things started changing. You know, a lot of people feel like they're not worthy. Um, a lot of people feel like God doesn't care about them, but this is not true. God cares about you. He's right there at the door of your heart right now. Um, what it is, is we have to open up our hearts to him. You know, we want God to move it for us. You know, I talked about it, uh, you know, I preached about it earlier um, about faith without works is dead. You know, we just want God to do it, but we don't want to do nothing for God to do it. We don't want to put ourselves in a position where God moves on our behalf. We just, Lord, do it. Lord, take this addiction away from me. Lord, take this lust out of me. Lord, take, and we're not even moving to try to, to, so God can move on it. You know, faith without works is dead. If you're not doing anything, why do you expect God to do something for you? So move towards what you want to take place in your life. When you move, that's activating your faith. I believe faith is an action. I believe it's an action. When you have faith in something, you're waiting for something to happen. So it takes moving towards it, not just sitting there and, oh, Lord, if you want, you know, having that type of spirit. We we need to be active. We need to be, hey, Lord, I'm moving on. I'm moving on faith. That's why the Bible says we 
Walk by faith and not by sight. Walking is an action. That's doing something. So when we're walking, we're walking in faith, not by what we see. If we walk off, if we look at, if we walk according to what we see, we might not move and we won't get to the prize that God has for us. We won't get to the blessing that God has in store for us. Amen. So, you know, I thank God for seeing me. Let me get back on that. You know, I don't want to preach. I'm about to get out of here. My, my two hours, I don't went over a little bit, um, but I got my two hours. I just wanted to share that um, and just appreciate and thank God for seeing us because there's some lost people out there. And no matter how much you tell them about God, they still don't want to hear it. God bless you, Judge Reba. Um, no matter how much you tell them about God. They just don't want to hear it. And you're not even forcing God down their throat. You're not even beating them over the head with a Bible. You're just simply telling them, hey, give it a try. Give it a try. Just try it. If if he don't do you good, then you can turn, then you can leave. But that's one thing I do know for a fact. When you give your life to God, when you put yourself in a position to for God to move in your life, he won't let you down. A lot of people not positioning themselves for God to move in their lives. You know, they they, uh, they they think about it for themselves. Oh, God ain't going to do that for me. You Have you tried it? They used to sing a song. Here, here we go. Here we go, uh, Brother Bradley. They used to sing a song back in the day called Have You Tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? They used to sing, have, have you tried him? You know, a lot of people haven't tried it. They just going off of what they think Jesus is going to do or they go off of what they think Jesus is going to, uh, how Jesus feels about them. Try it first. How you going to say something don't work if you ain't never tried it? How you going to say something is nasty if you ain't never ate it? How you going to say something, you know, you know what I'm saying? You got to try it first and then say, you know what? It ain't for me. And when you go for Jesus, go for Jesus. Don't go for people. There's a lot of people that was on a holy roll movement that was in there, that was on fire for God. And then some human being did something wrong and it ran them about the church because they was too busy watching man and looking at what man is doing. When you go for Jesus, keep your eyes on Jesus. Trust me, it's going to be a it's going to be a little struggle in there because the devil does not want you to get a relationship with Jesus. So. What he does is he and you got to pray for your leaders as well, because the enemy attacks the people you look up to in Christ, when it, in the body of Christ and those that may know God a little bit, been there longer than been on the been up, been on the battlefield for the Lord a little bit longer. The enemy attacks them more because he knows you're watching them. That's a person you model yourself after. or That's a person you look up to to grow in the faith. So what the enemy does is attack that person, sends all different type of lust attempts. Uh, you know, it's always an attack on leadership's lives because when they make a mistake, it, 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 it disqualifies their um, evangelical privileges. When you see this happen, you're like, oh, I thought he was supposed to. That's why if you look at people, they always, when a pastor makes a mistake or a prophet or somebody that's up there and God, when they make a mistake, we just throw the whole God thing away off of one mistake a person that made. You got to go for Jesus and pray for leadership because they're humans. The enemy is going to constantly attack the people that's over you in the church, the people that's over you and um, the faith that God may have uh, assigned to you. So, you know, you got to pray for your leadership, but go for Jesus and understand that man going to make mistakes. When a man when when a man falls, you got to understand the devil was attacking this brother or sister. Pray that God get them back where they need to get. Because the Bible says a just man falls seven times and get up. A foolish man falls once and don't get up again. So this lets you know that righteous people that, that are living upright before the Lord may fall. But one thing they're going to do is get back up. You don't want to discontinue that person because they done made a mistake and they walk or they done backslid or, you know, seeing them at the club drinking or something, but they supposed to be a minister. You, you just got to pray for them and pray that God gives them the strength to overcome these, these, these desires that, that may make them look like they're a, a, a false witness or, um, not a real person in God. These people are still real people in God. Just you got to realize that they're under attack as well. Amen. So I wasn't trying to preach or, or, or go in so long, but the Lord dropped that in my spirit to share. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the people. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. God is in the club. He everywhere. You can't. God is everywhere. He's trying to win souls. Y'all got to understand this. He is trying to win souls. Um, 
the ones that's already in church and then got their life together. He don't need to win them. I don't know why people think the target is uh, the church. We need to go to church and get. No, the church need to go back outside and get the people and bring them to where they can be healed. It's a hospital for sinners, not a clubhouse for the saints. Amen. All right. But yeah, let me stop. You're going to, so you're going to fire me up. Um, you're going to fire me up, brother Bradley. I'm glad you came by here, man. It's good to know you. Thank you for the gifts too. I appreciate that. Thank all of you guys for the gifts that you have sown on tonight. I pray that God will bless the hands that gave. And if you didn't have anything to give, I pray that God will fill up your, um, your cupboards and your storehouse that you may be able to give and help somebody out there that's um, less fortunate than you. Um, the Bible tells us to be a cheerful giver. So when we give, we want, we, we happy to do it, you know? Um, but I, I just thank God for each and every one of y'all that hung out with us on tonight. Y'all know, normally I don't go live on Sunday. Um, but you know, I'm chasing these hours y'all. So y'all just pray for me. Um, we're going to be back up and running again tomorrow. Uh, we might be playing Family Feud on tomorrow. So if you, if ain't nobody, if you ain't doing nothing tomorrow, uh, Brother Bradley, we're going to be on the multi panel. We like to play Family Feud. It's just a little fun game that we play amongst each other. Um, I have my own team and Sister Honesty, she has her own team. I'm the Backyardigans and they're the Conquerors. And we've just been going head to head for the past few months here. Um, but we're looking for more people to come and participate. Mom might watch some Family Feud uh, shows and take some of the questions from there. And then we just play on a, a nine panel um, just for fun. So if you're interested in that, please pull up tomorrow, 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, p.m. Um, also, Kiki got a birthday coming up. So whenever Kiki get with me for this party panel she want to do um, so I can be prepared for it, uh, Kiki, uh, let me know. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, sir. Um, but God bless each and every one of y'all um, on tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us for all of our sins. Lord, forgive us for the sins we've committed knowingly and unknowingly. Father God, we love you. Lord, we thank you for yet another day in the land of the living. Lord, we thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. Lord, we thank you for breath in our bodies, activities of our limbs. Lord, we thank you for shelter. We thank you for transportation. We thank you for food. Food. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have been providing for us. Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, and we thank you for that. Now, Father God, we lift you up on high, Lord, letting you know that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You sit high and you look low. There is none greater than you. There is none like you, Lord, and we thank you for looking at us on Calvary, God. We thank you for seeing us, bringing us into the flock and being the good, good shepherd that you are. Lord, we love you. Now, Father God, I ask that you would cover everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, keep them safe as they travel the highways and byways, going to school, going to work, going out shopping, whatever it is they're doing as they leave their houses and return home. Lord, let them get there safely and back. Father God, cover them. Keep your hands of protection over them. Wrap them in your loving arms. Fill them with your precious Holy Spirit. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, or danger. Cover them with your blood. Lord, and we will thank you. Lord, we'd be so careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Pray for them, Aramis. Pray for them. Pray for, for, for. Pray for them. Okay. Pray. Okay. Pray. <laughs> you got to lay hands on the phone. You laying hands on the phone? Yes. You are? Why you ain't laying hands on the phone? Why are you back there smacking all that ice? And why do you have that big old jar of juice? Kids, y'all. Make it out of here, man. Make it out of here, man. Anyways, y'all have a blessed night. I will see y'all on tomorrow. I'm going to play this song out. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and end it. Uh, Million Maker. God bless you, sir. Um, but yeah, we're going to play this song as the last song. And then I'm going to get up out y'all way. Y'all have a blessed night. LOE is in the building. And LOE is out of the building. Y'all welcome Dunamis to the family. That's one of my Xbox buddies. We play um, a lot of Xbox. He comes over here to watch uh, watch us and, and, and participate in praise and worship. So welcome to the family Dunamis if you're still here. Y'all have a blessed night. Amen and amen.